Well, it's, it's not a question of um, where we're going, it's where we've been. It, it's basically a look back on where we've been. The whole collection spans uh, from 30,000 B.C. to 2004. Some of these pieces you don't get to see. Well, I was just intrigued with um, art history in general that um, certain things were not being covered. And um, ever since then, I, I the um, the paintings uh, just kept coming and uh, coming out. There, there's a, a lot of beautiful, um, obscure works out there that are worthy of uh, being made as miniatures. So I tried to choose um, some of the most obscure works as well as the, um, the well-known pieces. My collection um, um, uh, um, represents the world and we all came from somewhere. I mean, at least it's not a uh, copied image from a magazine onto a copy machine, that it's from your own hand. Art is a personal story to everybody. Well, every time uh, an artist does a painting, he does put a, a little bit of himself into the work. Because we're all in the same boat. We all have our um, flaws. We're not perfect beings. I want people, people to be able to see it um, as a whole collection, not as one object. It's, it's a story about us about mankind and, uh, and about us. And who we are as, um, as human beings on this planet and trying to make sense of our world through the visual media. That has something to say about us. Well, I first learned of Richard McMahon through a newspaper clipping that a friend from Jacksonville, Florida sent me, indicating that there was an exhibition at a local library of an artist who had recreated all the world's great works of art in miniature and displayed them in the local library. And this intrigued me, so I was planning to come and visit Richard and have a look at the work, yet right in the middle of that time, 9-11 occurred. So I changed my travel plans and I ended up taking the show sight unseen and Richard delivered the exhibition to Charleston in two suitcases. So there was the entire history of Western civilization coming up on the train from Jacksonville to Charleston. When I first saw the work, when he pulled it out of the suitcase for the first time, I was even more amazed than I was just from the original impression that I had over the phone of what it would be like when I saw that he had actually mimicked the master's brush strokes and things like that. It was not, this was not merely a novelty. These were beautiful, exquisitely rendered replicas of these famous paintings. There are 1,100 objects in this exhibition, and the idea that someone would take on this task, it's a self-assigned task of recreating all the world's great works of art in miniature, is itself some, something of a curiosity. Richard sees himself as both an artist and an art historian. So he pursues both of those interests with, with passion. And one of his roles as an art historian is to expose people to this rich, wonderful history of art and to these wonderful masterpieces as well as lesser known works throughout the history 
So, in a sense, he sees that as part of his duty. It's a challenge to him when he sees something that's very complicated. He wants to reproduce it precisely. For example, Starry Night. He sought to reproduce Van Gogh's brush strokes in miniature, and that's actually a much harder enterprise to pull off than you can imagine. I'm happy to say that his painting, Starry Night, is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam currently. The cultural critic Walter Benjamin said that in, the, in his famous article, Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction in 1936, I believe, that by reproducing a work of art in a book, you take away its aura. And in a sense, Richard is re-instigating uh, an aura within the painting, taking it from the pages of an art history book and then creating an original, his original, from that copy. I think these are much more than mere copies. I think they are a loving homage to the artist and the, the history of art. He's interested as much in showing the masters and the well-known paintings of the period, the, the greatest hits of art history, as, as he is in shining a light on some of the more unknown artists of a period, or lesser-known works by major artists. So he uses the greatest hits in a way as the bait. He gets to show, well, you know, this is a, a painting by this artist that you've never seen before that I think really should be seen. Richard is a gentleman. He's, he's always very polite and kind to people. And I've always enjoyed the fact that he's very honest. And one of the things that strikes me about him is his passion. I'm delighted to have met him and to be able to help him get this work out to people so that others can appreciate the great artistry that he has shown in putting this collection together.